Hi folks, Astronomy Live here. Tonight I'm going to be reviewing the results of the prediction I made about the start of the SD eclipse season. First, let's briefly review how I made the prediction and what I predicted. Here is an image of the SDO spacecraft taken by my telescope. It's the dot you see here in the center. And using the positions of the known stars in the image, I astrometrically solved the image and calculated the coordinates of SDO over time. Using those coordinates, I solved the orbit and plugged it into this spreadsheet I created to calculate where Earth would be relative to the Sun in the images from the SDO spacecraft. You simply plug in the time and the position of the Sun and size of the Sun in the image, and it gives you the position of Earth and how large Earth should be relative to the Sun in the image. Using that data, I then generated this prediction about the start of the SDO eclipse season, which I said would begin on February 14th and I predicted that it would be a partial solar eclipse, that it would cover up more than half the Sun, but not quite all of it, and the extent to which it covered up the Sun would depend on the exact wavelength that you're looking at, because the atmosphere of the Earth is opaque to these extreme UV wavelengths, but the extent to which it is opaque, and the altitude at which it is fully opaque, varies depending on the wavelength. So let's find out how the actual observations from the SDO spacecraft on February 14th matched up with my prediction. First of all, here is SAO image DS9, and we have an image loaded from 7.15 universal time, around the time I predicted the eclipse would start. This image was taken at 1600 angstroms, and if we animate it, we can see how the eclipse actually occurred. So I'll simply select blink frames here, and we can see how this matches up to my prediction. So again, the blue line represents the edge of the Earth that I predicted would start to cover up the Sun, and you can see how the Sun was actually covered up by the Earth. I should also point out that these are the raw FITS files which I downloaded, not the processed versions you'll find on the SDO website. If you just click over to the SDO website and look at the images that are viewable in your browser, you will not see the full dynamic range of the images, which are high bit depth FITS files. SAO image DS9 is capable of viewing these FITS files, and that's what you're seeing here. The brightness of the images are actually being displayed in SAO image DS9 in a logarithmic fashion, not a linear fashion, which is why you can see more of the sun in the dimmer regions than you can in the processed versions that are on the SDO website. As you can see, my prediction for where the Earth would be in the image is a bit ahead of where it actually is at 1600 angstroms. However, this splits the difference between what you see at the 16 and 1700 angstrom images and what you see at some of the shorter extreme UV wavelengths. So if we look at an animation of the 211 angstrom images, you can see that the edge of the Earth appears to be a little bit ahead of where I predicted it would be. So again, it just depends on what wavelength you look at as to what extent Earth's atmosphere will block the light of the Sun. So you might also be wondering why the Sun appears to shift in these images as Earth starts to cover it up. You can see that in the 1600 angstrom images as well. And you can see that the green circle outlining the Sun moves with it. I actually actively positioned this green circle to match the Sun's position in the image and then used the coordinates of the Sun to feed back into the spreadsheet in order to generate uh, the position where Earth should be relative to the Sun when creating uh, this overlay. Now, the answer as to why the Sun appears to shift in these images has to do with how attitude control is actually performed by SDO. And this PDF explains it. And there are different modes that the spacecraft can go into for attitude control. Some of them rely on the inertial measurement units, which measure the position of the spacecraft using gyroscopes and the gyroscopic effect. But there's also science mode, which relies in part on information from the guiding telescope. So they actually have a guidance telescope that looks at the Sun and measures its position and uses that information to point the spacecraft. So as an object starts to block the Sun that will affect the measurements being made by this telescope and it will start feeding wrong information into the spacecraft and cause it to start to deviate from perfect pointing at the Sun. And that's why it appears to shift in these images. When the sun is completely blocked, the spacecraft still has its inertial unit to measure its position in space and approximately keep pointed at the sun, even when the sun's not visible. When the sun re-emerges, 
then the guiding telescope can take back over control of the spacecraft and keep it pointed straight at the Sun. Now you might be wondering what certain channels have to say about this event. After all, last year during the previous eclipse season, they couldn't stop talking about these eclipses occurring and claiming that the sun was dying or that something was sucking the sun's energy. Basically, the sun was going dark for mysterious reasons and not because the Earth was blocking the sun. As for what these channels have to say today about this, well... Bueller? Bueller? Bueller. Now at the time that I'm recording this, the closest thing I can find to any discussion of the current eclipse season seems to be this video from Chris Potter, which isn't really about the current eclipse season at all. In fact, as far as I can tell, it doesn't even mention it. But it does talk about the sun appearing to get darker in current images from SDO. But one of many problems with this discussion is that it doesn't use the original raw FITS files, which as I mentioned earlier, uh, are the high bit depth images these images are taken from the SDO website, and they are the processed low bit depth images, and you cannot use these for a scientific analysis of the relative brightness of the sun or anything else from one image to the next because they have been contrast enhanced. To have any kind of discussion about that, you must first start with the raw FITS files, which is not what is occurring here, so we can throw that right out. But it's the closest thing I can find to any discussion of the current eclipse season, at least at the moment, which is kind of suspicious since so many other channels were talking about it last year. So when will we see a return of people on YouTube claiming that this is something abnormal and that it can't possibly be Earth passing in front of the sun from SDO's perspective? I honestly don't know. Maybe they're done claiming that. Maybe they realize that because I predicted the start of this event using nothing but my own observational data, that it really just is Earth passing in front of the Sun, and that they were wrong. I honestly don't know if we'll ever see a return of those claims. I wouldn't be surprised if we did, but if we do, I'll be prepared to make more predictions about this eclipse season, and maybe even point the telescope at SDO as an eclipse is about to start. So, until then, clear skies, folks. Thanks for watching.